Hi booktube, it's Andrea. I know I've been really really bad with videos lately but I'm back and I'm here today to do my August Stroke September book haul. The reason I'm doing um, a dual one is I didn't do one in August so this is all of August books plus the one book I've bought so far in September and I really don't plan on buying any more if I can help it so oh. I'm exhausted again. Let's get on with the books. So the first book I got was actually, and a lot of these were actually second hand or given to me. I only bought one brand new one. One came from a book club and the rest were second hand. So. Um, so the first one is Clive Cussler, The Eye of Heaven. So this one says, in the stormy wastes of Canada's Baffin Island, treasure hunters Sam and Remy Fargo make an astonishing discovery, a Viking longship frozen in the Arctic ice. But what is more astonishing still is the longship's cargo, a hoard of pre-Columbian artifacts from Mexico. This tantalising mystery sends the couple to Central America in search of further evidence and into a heap of trouble. For Sam and Remy's find puts them on the trail of the legendary jewel in legendary jewel the eye of heaven which also sees other less scrupulous and murderous treasure hunters racing to get their first i like these sorts of archaeological type thriller things i think they're fantastic so when my dad said he had that i had to have it off of him by the way he's read it i didn't just take it the next one is jack higgins the eagle has flown which is the sequel to the eagle has landed funnily enough so basically at the back says the greatest World War II story of all time is not over. By the end of 1943 all evidence of Operation Eagle, the abortive German mission to assassinate Winston Churchill has been carefully buried in an unmarked grave in a remote corner of Norfolk. But two of the most wanted ringleaders are still alive. In the fourth hard winter of war British intelligence picks up disturbing reports from Henrik, Heinrich Himmler's power base in the wife the Wivelsberg Castle. The mission is not yet accomplished. For the Fatherland, the Reichsfuhrer is demanding the Eagles return at any cost. So again, why not? Next one is another Clive Cussler from my dad. I've got a great picture of Clive Cussler on the back <laughs> with a car. Dirk Pitt, 1932 Stutz. Now Dirk Pitt is his main character. And this one says, it's October 1933. A new Japanese economic empire has emerged to dominate the globe with its financial power. America in particular is increasingly under siege from its world trading rival, but threatened though it is, it's still unaware of a new and terrible danger it's about to face from a secret powerful group within Japan. Unaware that is until a Japanese owned ocean going car transporter is destroyed in the Pacific by a nuclear explosion. So. That one sounds quite good as well. Get a bit of the thrillery world war stuff going on. Another one from my dad, these are all from my dad, is Storm by Boris Starling. I really like the cover. A storm tossed crossing on the North Sea, a catastrophic ferry accident, hundreds dead. DCI Kate Bosch Beecham, I always pronounce that wrong, it's Beecham, Kate Beecham, is one of the, of the survivors, but her ferocious fight to stay alive brings with it, with it a high cost, a burden of guilt that she should live while some of her friends died, a terror of water, a frozen inner core that never seems to melt. Hoping to exercise her demons, Kate insists on leading the hunt for a murderer who has left a unique calling card in his victim's body, a poisonous snake. As you do! Into this emotional cauldron steps the last man on earth Kate wants to see, her estranged father Frank, in Aberdeen to conduct the inquiry into the sinking. In a sweltering heatwave, Kate and Frank conduct their highly pressured investigations, but for both of them, danger is approaching fast, a vortex of violence which will sweep them up and endanger their very lives. There you go. That sounds a bit good. So this just goes to show that you don't have to spend a fortune on books to be able to do booktube, because, like I said, so far I haven't spent any money on any of these books. It's good, isn't it? I like it. The next one is David Baldacci's The Innocent. I like David Baldacci, he's a good writer, so another thriller. Back in DC after successful missions in Edinburgh and Tangier, assassin Will Rob Roby sees his latest assignment to eliminate a US government employee go badly wrong. 
But what had she done and what did she know? Roby is now a wanted man and it seems that he's not the only one on the run. Young teenager Julie Getty is devastated by the inexplicable murder of her parents in their home. Who wanted them dead and why is a mystery. The police investigating the hit starts taking interest in Roby. He's particularly attracted the interest of Special Agent Nicole Vant. Oh yeah. <laughs> who believes that the two cases are connected. Roby finds himself in a dangerous position as he is tasked to investigate his crime at which he was present. Does he need to change sides to save lives, including his own? David Baldacci is always a really good writer. He always writes really good stuff. The next book is one that, the last book I got from my book in a brew because I've now cancelled that subscription um, just because I wanted to change. I will be looking at something else at some point. And luckily for me, the book was actually one that was on my Amazon wish list, and that's Radiance by Catherine M. Volante. Um, just fancied it when I heard what it was about. So I'll just read the inside flap. Severin Unk is the headstrong young daughter of a world famous film director. She has inherited her father's love of the big screen, but not his exuberant gothic style of filmmaking. Instead, Severin makes documentaries, artful and passionate, and even rather brave, for she is a realist in a fantastic alternate universe in which Hollywood occupies the moon, Mars is rife with lawless saloons, and the solar system contains all manner of creatures, cults and colonies. For Severin's latest project, she leads her crew to the watery planet of Venus to investigate the disappearance of a diving colony there. But something goes wrong during the course of their investigations and her crew limp home without her. All that remains to Severin are fragments. Can these snippets of scenes and shots, voices and memories and pages and recordings be collected and pieced together to tell the story of her life and shed light on the mystery of a vanishing. Clever, dreamy, strange and beautifully written. Radiance is a novel about how stories give form to worlds. So, as you know, I'm big on the real Hollywood. Well, as real as Hollywood could be. So I'm really looking forward to reading this take on it. <clears throat> Hollywood on the moon, why not? Been there lots of times. The next two books are ones that my partner picked up for me in Tesco on the sale, um, the charity book store. And they're two hardbacks of Peter James's books. We've seen them before on this channel. I've got the paperback, so I will be unhauling them soon. So you'll be looking forward to seeing eight unhauled to see what I'm getting rid of and why. And they are Once You Dead and You Are Dead. So if you know Peter James at all, you know he does like to use permutations of the words you and dead or need and dead. They've got dead in the title. So those are just to replace a couple of paperbacks. Now the next four books are all related to one particular topic. They're all to do with Hollywood, classic Hollywood, and one particular person, and that is the legendary actress Mae West. Um, so we've got Simon Luvish's Mae West, It Ain't No Sin. I've got uh, uh, Mae West, Empress of Sex by Maurice Leonard. These are all quite chunky bios as well. And then the only book I bought brand new this month is a self-published book by a guy named Tim Malachewski. He was Mae West's last personal assistant through the 1970s until her death in 1982. I believe it was 82. And he also has a major collection of Mae West belongings. He sort of collected back everything that she had in her Ravenswood home and her beach house and it's now all stored at his home and various places that he has and he's put together a couple of books and this one is called Mae West Intrigue in Every Drop and it features the perfumes that Mae West collected and used and even perfumes that were inspired by her. So, for instance, um, Chaparelli designed a perfume um, called Shocking and um, what had happened was Chaparelli was designing some outfits for Mae West and they sent, uh, she wouldn't come from Paris to to meet Mae West in Hollywood and Mae West wouldn't go to Paris to meet Chaparelli. So they sent Mae West's dress form over and when Chaparelli saw it, she said, oh my God, this is shocking. And she designed a perfume around it. There's also all sorts of little adverts as well. It's a beautifully put together book one of her perfume bottles and it just shows you various items of the Malachewski collection so it's a really nice little book it's not cheap for a self-published little thing like this but it is a gorgeous book so 
I'm glad I've got that. And the last Mae West related book is Mae Weller, Blah. The Complete Films of Mae West by John Tusker, Introduction by Parker Tyler. So this is an overview of her screen career, gives us a list of all her films. It contains lots of lovely photographs. So I already have a couple of uh, complete films of from the series. I have Judy Garland one, I think. Yeah, the Judy Garland one. I have the Jean Harlow one. And of course, I have the Marilyn Monroe one. So Mae West. Nice. Two more to go. I told you there was a, a lot, um, but not a huge amount. We've done bigger hauls. Next one is a great big hardback called The Story of Kodak by Douglas Collins. So obviously this is the story of, well, Kodak. Um, it takes it from the beginnings, so there's photographs of the old cameras, there's lots of pictures inside it, and it's a history of the company up until the mid 90s. Um, obviously it doesn't go into when the company went into administration and filed for bankruptcy protection and was taken over by Kodak Alaris which is the UK based pensions company, they now own the film, uh, rights and make the films, uh, or something like those lines. anyway, Coda Colaris is now the company that, that manufactures the films anyway, but it's a really good overview of the history up to the mid 90s before the digital revolution. The only book I've bought this month, if I can bend over and get it, is Stephen King's Song of Susanna, which is book six of the Dark Tower series. Obviously, I'm currently reading The Dark Tower as part of the Stephen Kingathon with Missy over at the Binge Reader. I am enjoying them. I'm glad to see they're getting a little bit thinner now. And I'm really looking forward to this one. This is the next one I'll be reading. And it basically says, Pivotal sixth novel in Stephen King's best and an epic fantasy saga provides the key to the quest that defines Roland's life. Susanna has used the power of Black 13 to get to New York when she, where she can give birth to a child fated to grow up as Roland's nemesis. Jake and Father Callahan set out to break her date with Destiny and to find Calvin Tower, owner of the vacant lot where a magical rose grows, a rose that must be saved at all costs. Meanwhile, Roland and Eddie tumble into Maine in the summer of 1977. Here they are greeted by the gangster Balazar and must face their maker. A man called Stephen King. I do like it when authors insinuate themselves into the plots of their own books. I'm really looking forward to seeing what Stephen King does with himself in his novel um, sometime, hopefully uh, towards the end of September, which will then put me up to date with the Stephen King Athon challenge. I'm doing really well with that. Really hard going because Wolves of the Color, which was book five, was absolutely massive. Brilliant, but massive. So those are all the books I bought in August and September. Have you read any of them? If you have, let me know. I'd love to know your thoughts. Um, so leave some comments down below. Any recommendations? I'm always happy to take recommendations of books because in my opinion, there are not enough books in the world for me to read. So please, please, please recommend me some. And I will be back soon with my extreme, extremely late August wrap up, I promise and some other bits and pieces that are coming your way as you know I posted the video the other day of me playing with my box brownie so if you want to see anything more like that just let me know I will see you all soon don't forget if you've liked this video to, to put, give it the thumbs up share it with your friends on your social media leave me a comment like I said recommend me some books because you can never have enough and of course don't forget to subscribe if you've not already a subscriber because I do appreciate all 260 odd of you that have already subscribed and yeah, I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye.